Welcome to the Elevate the Edge podcast. I'm Maribel Lopez of Lopez Research, and I'm joined with my co-host, Joe Peterson of Clarify 360. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, welcome. Elevate the Edge is published bi-weekly. The podcast focuses on helping companies understand what edge computing is, how the market will evolve, and what you need to know to build successful edge computing strategies. Show notes and subscription links can be found at elevatetheedge.com slash episodes. We hope you'll enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I'm Maribel Lopez and we are here with Joe Peterson, my fabulous co-host. Hey, Joe. Happy New Year, Maribel. And we are Elevating the Edge. And today we're very excited to be joined by another fabulous technical expert. We have Professor Muriel Meda. She is the NEC Professor of Software Science and Engineering at MIT and the Chief Scientist for Steinwarf. We are so happy to have you here today, Muriel. You are also a member of the U.S. National Academy of Engineering, a member of the German National Academy of Sciences, uh, Lepobonia, and a fellow of the U.S. National Academy of Inventors. I-, I could go on. It's There's so many great things that Muriel is working on. But first, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mayor Bell. Thank you, Joe. And thanks to Joe for finding Muriel. So I'm just going to jump right in and say, can you share some of the work that you're doing and how it relates to edge computing? Absolutely. Um, So the group that I lead at MIT is the Network Coding and Reliable Communications Group. Um, And I think when we talk about reliable communications, we're really talking about reliable computing. Uh, Most of the data that's being transmitted right now uh, is not for communicating in, uh, let's say, an old-fashioned sense of just making a phone call. It's really communicating uh, for a purpose, for a particular function, uh, which is usually very much associated with computing. So uh, I'm usually communicating with applications, um, communicating with different services, and those services are communicating uh, with the purpose of computing on the data in order to provide uh, something useful to me. Um, So a lot of the work that I do is around doing all of these different functions in a way that's efficient, reliable, timely, secure, and private. And that's really the core of uh, what I do. Uh, And embedded in that is also in a way which is um, sufficiently general uh, to have a real perennity so that, you know, you're not making sort of point solutions, which may work very well, um, you know, and might be quite valuable in a narrow context, uh, but solutions which uh, have a wide applicability uh, and will be of lasting cost. So it's funny, you started with the making a phone call, and I just realized I don't remember the last time I made a phone call because (laughs) everything seems to be a web conference now, and a good old-fashioned phone call might be interesting. But I really like where you're going with the discussion of we've moved communications from uh, what was a person-to-person voice thing to a uh, person-to-thing thing, a thing. There's a lot of different dimensions in terms of uh, the reliability, the latency, the amount of bandwidth you need to make different applications and services work. And I think that's at the heart of what we're talking about with a lot of edge computing discussions. And I know that you actually um, were chatting about 5G communications at one of the MIT Summer Institute programs. And I wanted to talk about, you know, what are you seeing in 5G? Uh, Why is something like opening 5G communications important? And how does it matter in the realm of edge computing? Yes, thank you. That 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 is uh, that is definitely one of the the topics that's been, I think, of most interest uh, to me, certainly personally. Uh, but I think has been emerging as uh, a topic that really needs to have much more attention paid to it. I- I'm going to start by uh, 
uh, latching on to two things you said, Maribel, which I think are key. One is bandwidth and the other is latency. And uh, very often we've sort of been um, using bandwidth in order to give us more latency. Uh, or better latency, rather. Uh, to to give you an example, um, suppose that you were ordering uh, a meal service and you said, look, I, I want 52 weeks of food. Um, and your meal service only gave you uh, four weeks worth of food, but once a month. You know, somewhere towards the middle of the month, your food would be stale. Now, you got enough food, uh, but it's stale. Um, so now you would have two choices. Choice one, is you would try to engineer your system so that you actually get, you know, one delivery a week and then you get the same amount of food, but rather than having to throw it out halfway, th throw half of it out halfway through the, the week, you're actually getting a week by week, okay? That's what I try to work on um, with, for instance, uh, network coding and having, you know, much smarter management of the data itself. The other approach, which is the approach to a large extent that we've been taking, is to say, well, you know, why don't you instead increase the amount of food you get? You're going to get four different services staggered in time. Sure, you'll get four times more food than what you needed. You know, one week you get one service, four baskets of food, you know, another week, another service. And that's, in effect, what happens with, um, with replacing latency uh, with just bandwidth. So a lot of the extra bandwidth that we talk about right now is not necessarily because there is a need for more throughput, more food, if you will. Now, you do need a certain amount of food, right? If you don't get 52 baskets of food, you will, you know, run out of food. You won't have enough bandwidth. You won't have uh, enough volume there to sustain your services or sustain yourself. Um, but uh, to a large extent, uh, we have been replacing um, in effect, intelligent engineering, which is, you know, getting your food delivered once a week, uh, with just over-provisioning, which is getting four different services staggered in time. Um, and I think that um, when you look in particular at the very large amount of um bandwidth uh, that has been bought, if you look, for instance, at the latest, you know, FCC um, uh, uh, auctions for, 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 for Spectrum, you can see that, you know, you, you see these massive demands. And as I said, this doesn't come from phone calls, right? This comes from computing. Um, so what happens with computing, and, you know, I think this has a lot to do then with edge computing, is um, to some extent you're trying to, again, reduce the latency. And are you going to reduce the latency only by adding more and more bandwidth? Well, at some point, there's also just a question of delay because of proximity. So what do you do? You cache. Um, you try to make the, the proximity uh higher uh, so that you're reducing those delays and in fact, again, reducing that need for bandwidth. Um, again, it would be a bit like if you had um, a food service system and, you know, you were ordering your food from very, very far away, you know, you wouldn't get it on time for you for your next week, right? So you're going to order from from a, um, a provider that that is closer to you that, that can deliver your food in, in, in the timely fashion. So, um, to me, what happens with edge computing is that um, it has been interacting to some extent in a very um, uncoordinated fashion, I would say, to a large extent, uh, with respect to what's happening uh, in the layers that are actually providing uh, the communication, that is to say, you know, providing the transportation. Going back to, to our example, it's like, you know, you managed to get yourself a provider that was very close to you. You said, great, but then that provider is sending out somebody on a bicycle once a week. Not going to do it, mm -hmm. right? So, so you need all of these pieces to be there. I'll give you two concrete examples um, of... of um, 
of the kind of work that we do. Um, so one example I mentioned network coding is, you know, of course, you know, I've been using examples of food, uh, but, you know, data is algebraic and food generally, I hope, isn't. Uh, so, you know, uh, the, the, the difference being that, you know, I can't take an apple and an orange and munch them together. I guess I could puree them, but it's not very attractive. But, you know, <laughs> that's not what happens with, with data. I can take, you know, one piece of data, call it X, another piece of data, call it Y. I mean, in the end, and I want X, which is my apple. I want Y, which is my orange. But one of the clever things I can do is I can munge them together algebraically. I can sum them, say, to X plus Y. And now I have a much more flexible way to represent my data. Uh, so suppose that, for instance, I have a lossy system, which is one of the big uh, issues in particular in uh, wireless systems. And, you know, you're talking about 5G. One of the great things about 5G is that it's looking at um, developing some fairly underutilized uh, spectrum in the higher frequencies, what we often call millimeter wave, think around 28 gigahertz, so like 10 times higher uh, than the frequencies that we generally use currently, which are usually around like two and a half gigahertz. Um, and that's great. There's lots and lots of spectrum there. But um, there are a lot more issues to deal with. It's more unreliable, right? It's, it's, it's a very abundant, uh, but much more tricky resource to use. Um, so now I might be sending you these two pieces of data and you really need both of them and you need them quickly, right? So I sent you X and I sent you Y and say you lose X and you see Y and say, well, I really need X and Y, you know, it's, this is data. These, again, this is not voice where, okay, some part of it went away. I really need all the data. I cannot make a decision. I cannot provide a service, uh, if I don't have X and Y. So you say, look, Muriel, um, I got one of your variables, but I didn't get X. I said, okay, fine. I'll resend X to you. Okay. This is perfectly re reasonable, but that whole time that it took for me to send X, for you to realize that you don't have X, for you to request X back from me, and for me to send it back to you, there's a lot of delay there. There's a lot of you know coordination and back and forth around our having to decide that. So now uh, I could say, well, you know, it looks like some of my variables get lost, uh, maybe I'm going to repeat them. So maybe I repeat X twice and I repeat Y twice. So you get X, then the second X gets lost and you get Y and Y. So this is great. You got X and Y, but I ended up using twice as many resources and you got two copies of Y. What are you going to do with it? Right. Um, that's, you got two oranges. You only need one orange. Okay. So that wasn't, that wasn't, uh, you know, that worked, but that wasn't very efficient. Um, yeah, it so, reminds me a lot about how we were originally talking about the concepts of quality of service and class of service, just an IP in general. So, exactly. So That's it's like exactly how exactly that. So how how you know, when you think about it is how do we advance that? How do we move it? Forward? How do we advance that exactly? So you know, X and Y. I mean, everything I told you up until now, they really could have been an apple and an orange, right? That you just generally look. I didn't get the apple. I didn't get X, or I didn't get the orange, I didn't get Y, or, you know, I send you two apples, two oranges, figuring, you know, one of the fruit is going to get lost. But again, now, what if I happens that I said, look, I know that some of the fruit gets lost. She really needs one apple and one orange. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do X plus Y. Now, again, you know, I can't do this with apples and oranges, uh, but I can do this uh, with, um, with numbers, right? I sum up two numbers. It's still a single number. It's still like I sent you one piece of fruit. It's a funky piece of, you know, it's a orange apple or apple orange or whatever it is, uh, I send it to you. And, you know, if you have that apple orange, you can su uh, subtract an orange or subtract an apple and you get back the other fruit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you X. I'm going to send you Y. I'm going to send you X plus Y. Now, if you got X and Y, eh, fine, right? If you get X, lose Y, get X plus Y, you can recover Y. If you lost X, get Y, get X plus Y, you can recover X. Okay, so now I've what I've done is I've sent you three pieces of fruit. One of them get lost, and you got two pieces of fruit. And no matter which one got lost, you're happy, right? And we didn't have to spend that whole time going back and forth trying to identify what thing you lost. Uh, we don't. I don't also just have to duplicate or triplicate or you know <laughs> however many placate uh, the the fruit, which is really really wasteful. A lot of it is going to go to waste. Um, so I got the 
data, what you needed to you quickly. Now, you know, how do we do that in a way which is uh, network ready, right? There's going to be maybe other nodes in between and some nodes are going to lose the fruit and others are not. Uh, I may have multiple paths, you know. Uh, I mean, basically, I may have particularly going to 5G, you know, 5G is a very heterogeneous uh, suite of um of technologies, I mentioned. Uh, uh, I mentioned the very high frequencies. There's also the same frequencies we use in 4G. There's also frequencies like 600 megahertz that you know are much lower. That we, you know, many cases we sort of hadn't used for a while, or n- at least not in these contexts. And so now you're looking, and there's Wi-Fi. You know, most of the traffic that we think of as 4G uh, is actually Wi-Fi. You know, my phone is usually on Wi-Fi. I have a 5G phone. It's mostly a Wi-Fi phone. <laughs> it's like my home, my, my office, it's on Wi-Fi. It's only when I'm going around that it's not. Um, so, you know, how do we use all of these resources so that now, again, you don't have to go, well, you know, send me my Apple on Wi-Fi and sending my, send me my orange on 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 millimeter wave. And by the way, if the Apple gets lost and we have to tell you back about it, oh, wait, you're not on that Wi-Fi anymore. Let me, let me, see where you are, you know, instead of doing that, we're basically coding, which is what these algebraic combinations, I give you the simplest one, which is a summation, we're coding, and then you get a very fluid, very malleable, and, you know, highly responsive, adaptable type of system. So that's one example. Um, I can give you another example that we're working on. Um, right now, I give you fruit is missing. Uh, sometimes fruit also goes bad. <laughs> it's there. But you open, you know, you open the box and you wish that fruit weren't there. You know, it's not looking very good. Those are errors, right? So, um, you know, what can you do? You can ask for another piece of fruit. Uh, but maybe, you know, sometimes it's not so bad. You can just cut off that piece of fruit. Now, I'm not giving your listeners any suggestions. You know, I know it's not good to cut off bad pe- the bad piece from the fruit. But let's face it, we all do, right? The difference with data is you're not quite sure necessarily where it is. And um, it also depends on how much of you, your apple's gone bad, you know, how much are you going to cut off? So that's what we call redundancy. You end up, I ended up sending you bigger, juicy apples than what you needed, maybe because you know that some part may go bad and you may need to chop it off. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, in traditional systems, you do that by having codes. And the way these codes work is, again, they're very, very um, algebraic in nature, uh, as I was describing before. And then there's a lot of back and forth between the sender and the receiver to figure out what codes to use. The receiver has to be, um, you know, generally equipped with bespoke, highly specialized highly expensive, often highly energy inefficient uh, hardware to try to decode uh, that particular that particular system. That's to say, imagine that you had a system where you basically have a pairing knife, which will only work um, for, you know, hun- honeydew melon or for, you know, Granny Smith apples. I mean, it's literally to that level, right? It's for that one, not even that kind of fruit, but that 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 type of fruit, but that particular type of fruit. Right? It's not even for apples. So, uh, you know, it's not even just for low density pear check codes, which are apples. It's for low density pear check codes of a particular type at a particular rate. You know, I mean, it's that specific. Um, and the receivers right now have, you know, all these specific knives to try to cut off the bad parts. Um, and generally, also you end up having to send really huge amounts of fruit. Again, uh, remember the, the, the example with all the waste. Uh, basically, right now we're sending a huge amount of waste. So we know how much of the fruit goes bad. I say, you know, I mean, this is called the bit error rate. It's like one in a hundredth of a bit. Okay, so like 0.1% goes bad. And if you look at how, and that means that normally I would only have to send extra fruit, you know, of about a hundredth of about a tenth of a, uh, of a percent. And instead what we're doing is we're sending 50% more fruit, 30% more fruit. Again, you know, it's because of an effect, uh, let's just call it, you know, inefficient engineering, uh, that we are wasting all those resources. And because of that, we need more bandwidth. So a lot of what we work on right now is actually being much more conscious um, using optimal codes 
and decoding them. Now, why weren't optimal codes used up until now? Well, because we had these knives, which, by the way, you know, only let you cut off like an apple in half or a third bit off or lop off, you know, maybe a fifth of it. You know, it's like right now what we have is a decoder, you know, this 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 item that fixes the errors, removes the bad part of the fruit uh, and, you know, removes it, you know, 1% or a, a, a tenth of a percent. And for any code, so you have the same knife, whether, you know, somebody sent you an apple or an orange or, uh, you know, a cantaloupe, you know, you're just using the same knife. Uh, and we're actually presenting that. Uh, this is work uh, with Professor Duffy at um, Northeast, uh, Northeastern University and Professor Yazichichil at Boston University. We are presenting this at ISSCC, which is the major uh, circuits um, conference uh, in uh, in February in in the Bay Area. So we're very excited, oh, and and it's very efficient. Yes. It's the first one that actually also does below uh, one picojoule per bit uh, in in terms of energy for uh, for the decoding. So it's about an order of magnitude okay. from the state of the art. So I know Joe's been dying to jump in with a question here. <laughs> Sorry, I've been rambling really, on. <laughs> really, really interesting because it sounds like, you know, what the work that you and, and your peers are doing around coding is actually going to improve um, latency, right? So that's that sounds pretty interesting to me because one of the ways that folks had gotten around that in the past is the caching example that you used yes. and or the over-provisioning. Right. That's that was right. sort of a way to combat those two things. Um, I want to switch focus here a little bit and talk about wireless APIs. And mm -hmm. I I think folks are trying to understand how they might matter at the edge. We've lost Muriel. Apologies, I got disconnected. So I have yeah. wireless APIs and then... <laughs> yeah, let me... <laughs> so, so, Muriel, I wanted to talk about wireless APIs and why they might matter to folks as the edge evolves. What are your thoughts? So, in my view... So, let me actually step back and maybe say... That it define that you know I think that defining what an API is is also super important. Yeah, you know? I mean it's this type of thing that everybody knows what it is, but on the other hand, nobody quite can quite tell you, right? So like everybody goes, well, of course you want an API. You know, how could you not want some sort of multi-purpose, uh, well-defined, uh, robust way to connect two modules? You know. You, you know, I don't want an API said no one ever, right? Uh, although you'd be surprised, I have heard it. Uh, but, but then what does it do, right? And I think what we've seen right now, particularly in the realm of standardization, is we've seen, you know, sort of the APIization, if I may, you know, create a really awful portmanteau um, of, let's say, the higher layers. So um, efforts like Open RAN you know, are very much in the API uh, domain. Um, what we haven't seen, and this is something I'm pushing very much for, is sort of the APIization at lower layers. Um, you know, standards have still been, uh, I would say, at the, you know, medium access or maybe daily link layer and below, extremely, extremely, um, uh, monolithic, let's say. Okay. So um, one example is the error correcting codes that I told you before, right? This is like, you know, if you look at 5G, for instance, there's like two different kinds of codes. There's low density paracheck codes, LDPC, and there's CA polar codes, you know, uh, CRC aided uh, polar codes. And that's it. Yeah. You know, this is a huge wild world of codes. You're going to use those two codes and uh, you know, for a given number of, of rates. And, and that's it. That's all you're going to do, you know. And things like LDPCs are very long. And long is usually not very good for low latency, okay? Now, if you consider the APIization as saying, no, really what I have is I have an API, which is 
this is my error correcting module, right? Now you can use the old fashioned incumbent codes if that's what you want. You can use, so whatever legacy technology you have, you can use new stuff, which is, you know, better suited to your application. It doesn't matter, right? Basically the API is data goes in, data comes out with a certain measure of reliability out of your system, right? Uh, so the chip I mentioned to you, uh, that's called GRAND, by the way, Guessing Random Additive Noise Decoding, um, that is uh, exactly, you know, but it does. It just decodes any code, you know, with um, with a moderate or low redundancy. Okay. Um, so having an, you know, uh, another example is, um, for instance, we've been doing a lot of work on optimizing modulation. Modulation is how you actually create, say, in the wireless domain, in the electromagnetic spectrum, how you actually create the signals that are going to convey information. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, right now, there's only a certain small number of modulations. Um, if you look at, again, how much uh, performance you're leaving on the table, it's a huge amount of performance. Okay. And if instead of being monolithic through standards that are, you know, in many cases, replicating stuff, I mean, you know, LDPCs, for instance, fantastic, but they're from the early 60s. I mean, obviously, there's been improvements, but, you know, this is... This is inherently pretty old technology, right? Um, modulations, again, you know, you're doing modulations that are the same ones that I learned when I was a grad student and that was in yesterday. So, you know, how do we actually go beyond that uh, in, a, in, a, in a system which actually is doing the best thing that you can at every time? So I know that... Uh... You've got the sound of your next meeting coming up. No, I have so. turned it off. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought yeah. I had turned off the no to not disturb. <laughs> but if if we were going to wrap it up in a sentence, what would you say you're thinking about that people need to do here? I really like this issue of the modularization, the API, APIization, APIization. Uh, I think that really moving away from you know, making standards define how APIs talk to each other, not defining things that should not be defined, that don't need to be defined, uh, not fixing the codes, the error correcting codes, not fixing the modulation, uh, fixing as little as possible so that you can have the best performance. We are being so staggeringly wasteful right now, you know, and as an engineer, it's, it, it's, it's just basically do what matters. It's right? just like do it matters. Right, you know? As an engineer, so, so as a Muriel, person. Yeah. We we like to close the podcast with a fun fact. Do you have a fun fact you can share with the audience? So I'm gonna share a fun fact, uh, which is that a lot of people don't know who one of the pioneers in wireless communications was. Um and uh, her name was Hedy Lamar. She sure, was yeah. a, uh, an actress, you know, uh, a very successful actress, uh, particularly in the 40s, had a fascinating life. Um, there was a, a wonderful um, a movie by Susan Sarandon called Bombshell about her. And I've given a few lectures actually uh, about her patent um her wireless patent uh you know much has been written about her her artistic career as you know as an actor and and um a you know a, a, a very a, a quite a polymath um but uh i think that the, i don't think there's pe something people don't know about but it's maybe an un underknown fact that's a great fact and we'll put a link to some of uh that in the show notes. Muriel, thank you so Great. much for your time. Thank you both. And if you can send me a link, I will um, I will make sure to publicize it uh, in my network. Thank you so much for taking time with us. Thank Have you. a lovely rest of your day. It. You too. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe so you can easily find us again. Follow us on Twitter at Maribel Lopez and at Digital Cloud Guy, and on LinkedIn. Links to our social profiles, show notes, and ways to listen to the podcast 
can be found at elevatetheedge.com.